Well, we're back with Dan Hurd down here at the uh, demonstration system. Dan, what are we doing today? I brought five samples for you to run for me. Uh -huh. uh, one sample is quartz from a placer, a placer claim in the river. But the river is loaded in gold, so I want to see if the quartz has anything in it. Okay. Then we've got uh, a sample from my dream claim. The added I found on my dream claim had a whole lot of mineralized quartz, so I brought a couple bags of that down. We have some stuff I collected at the Gold Drop Mine. Uh, I have a video of that on my channel if you want to check that out. Uh, gold and silver, both free milled. And then the exciting one, my new Apex Mine. Uh, really high assay results for gold, silver and copper all in one. And uh, it's brand new to me, so I want to see what's in it. It'll be an interesting video today. And we're wrapping up like five or six videos, it sounds like, it maybe sounds for like you. It's... Yeah, yeah. So if you want to see the first part of these videos, check out Dan's channel, Dan Heard Prospecting. Here's a little look at these samples. These must be the ones off the plaster claim you were telling us about. Yes. It looks pretty good. There's some mineralization in there. and They're really juicy looking samples, for sure. Yeah. And these are two separate samples, or we're going to yes. run them together? No, two, two separate. Two separate, okay. This is from my dream claim, that's from Ladner Creek. Awesome. All right, and here helping us today is Harry from Mine Operator. Howdy. Hey, Harry. Don't mind feeding some buckets into the crushers today, do you? No, I don't. All right. I'm actually excited to see the uh, the placer quartz go through the system. I've heard stories of guys up in the north doing placer, and they just leave the hard rock and no way to process it, and they knew there was stuff in it, but they couldn't touch it, so I'm curious to see how that turns out. Nice. And this is the first time you've seen the system run, right? Oh, yeah. I've yeah. never seen your system run yet in person. Cool. Awesome. Well, we'll get it done today. Oh, yeah. Uh, and we're going to start everything through our 6x10 jaw crusher as usual. It'll crush down through the jaws, fall right down into a bucket. We will transfer the bucket over to the 16 by 12 hammer mill. We're gonna run it wet with a little bit of water. It's gonna make a nice slurry to feed right down that orange chute onto our shaker table. All the gold is gonna migrate across these grooves here up under the water bar and down into our number one and number two concentrates here. We have a middlings trough that we usually don't save and then the tailings go into the buried tank here and we recirculate the water. boulders no gold let's move on okay green flame hard rock mine Now we'll run the gold drop stuff. Should have some nice galena on the table with this. Supposed to have free gold and some 
3 mil silver as well. Now we're running the gold drop sample from Dan. That's really, really nice galena in it. So I expect to see a nice big band of blue, kind of gray-blue galena on the table. Just brushed down the table and there's a really nice band of galena here. There's that blue, gray, silver line there. That's galena, which is a lead sulfide. It's deep and it's washing out everywhere. Oh, lots of gold. Lots of gold and silver. We'll concentrate that one spot for a good picture, but it's throughout. Lots of flakes. Very nice, that's a pretty good ore. That's, it's everywhere in there. Cool, a gold drop. Here's some stuff Dan brought from the Apex mine. It is incredibly heavy in sulfides. So we're going to get a nice sulfide band on the table on this one, I think. Look at that. Full of pyrotite calcopyrite. Panning down the apex. A lot of sulfides. A lot of gold in there. There's a lot of gold in there. It's so hard to pan with the sulfides. Especially, we're just looking for a quick and dirty look here. Whoop, was it washing all the way? Or smelt it down. Yeah, smelting's gonna tell us what it really is. Yep. Dan is panning down the apex samples. We're gonna reduce them in volume a little bit and then we are here in the smelting lab. We're gonna put them in our smelting furnace, smelt them down, pour them into our cone mold and recover the precious metals from his sample. This is the pan down concentrates from the apex. There are still quite a bit. We have a little over a kilogram of ore there. So what I'm going to do is mix it up. I think we're going to have a matte layer. I'm going to use this number 10 crucible and we're going to try and get as much flux in as we can and absorb as much of those sulfides as we can. So I will work on a flux recipe and let you know here in a minute. Here's our recipe. We have about 700 grams of soda ash, about 700 grams of borax, and 200 grams of silica sand. I'm going to put a lid on this, shake it up, and hopefully I can fit it all in this number 10 crucible. It is gonna be close. Here's our number 10 crucible. It's a little bit too full, but I've added some bismuth as a collector, and now we'll put it in our furnace over there and get it heating up. Yeah.
Let me know if I need to get over your way. You're good. Well, Dan always brings me the hard samples. So we took our cone that had the mat on it and the mixed bismuth metal, and we put it back in the hot crucible. And I'm trying to melt the metal off the mat. And it seems to be working pretty good. You can see the pool of metal there underneath. The bismuth has a very low melting point. So we're gonna get the bismuth melted. The mat layer should stay solid. So once the metal is melted out, I'll just reach in and pick out the mat, and then we can pour the molten metal right into the cupel. This is the mat that the bismuth was held onto, but the bismuth has mostly melted out of it. So now, bad idea. Eyeballs. Very hard still. Iron sulfide has a very high melting point. And it looks like what happened is there was some sulfide that came down first and the bismuth couldn't displace it at the bottom of the cone. Okay. Yeah, a little There's bit definitely there. beads of uh, the bismuth still left St in it. Still on there, yeah. Uh, but we're not doing a you know, scientific assay here, so if we lose a little bit to that, it's not a big deal. So what are you about to do? I'm about to take a very hot cupel out of the furnace and pour liquid bismuth into that hot cupel from a very large crucible. Watch your step. Will it will it work? I'd say that worked well. Worked worked okay. And we now put the bismuth gold silver mix in a cupel in a furnace let oxygen do its work and oxidize the bismuth oxidized bismuth will absorb into cupel leaving just the precious metals behind there's having to go at it hey that worked that's a hammer isn't it yeah sure <laughs> Have a ring of sight. And I don't have gloves on, so I'm not touching anything yet. There it is. There it is. That looks nice. There you That's go. what a bead's supposed to look like. Gold drop button. The gold drop button. How hot is it? Oh. Okay. Yeah, I can touch it. It's nice and cool. How much does that weigh? Add 20, 20 grams to what it says there. <laughs> I can't see what it says there. Uh, it's 100, 130 grams, so we'll need another big cupel for that one. We will, okay. Here's Dan's gold drop bead, right about 0.09 grams. Quite silver in color, but I bet there's some gold in there as well. Dan's little collection of gold from today. All those beads in there you got from the stuff you ran today. 
Well, Dan is getting the table cleaned off. Don't tell my wife I clean things. <laughs> We're gonna take a look at this sample over here that I'm very excited about. These are some placer cons that this guy has worked really, really hard. He's run them like three or four different times over various shaker tables, and he still thinks there's quite a bit of gold in here. And so we're gonna, Dan brought down half a bucket. He's got tons and tons of this stuff, and we're gonna run it on our table and see if we can recover any more of that flat, flaky, fine, fine plaster gold that other tables and other methods have such a hard time with. So I am very excited to see how this runs. We've been running a few minutes now. Harry's feeding the table for us. And we're seeing some gold come down, not a lot. He's run it three or four times through his tables, it sounds like. But here's a piece of gold coming down right here. And we've seen several flakes similar to that, but it's gonna march its way right down the table. At this point, the pyrites are pretty much cleaned away and it's gonna go right into the number one concentrates. Most of the pyrite is coming down into the number threes. There's pretty much nothing going into the tailings. And it's taken some, this is obviously much denser than what we normally run on the table. So it's taken a little bit of trial and error to adjust the water, adjust the feed rate. We're feeding in the first or the, the, the back half of the trough here. So we're not using the, the long grooves hardly at all. We're using it more as a finishing table at this point. But we're got, kind of getting the hang of it and we're catching all the gold that we've seen and all the gold that's still in this material has has just come right out of the number one groove right under the water bar here and straight down into the number one now at the end here we may have a full bucket of number one that we can take and rerun back onto the table and clean it up further we'll just see what we get at the end i've turned the water up quite a bit now and almost all the sulfides are getting pushed down into the number twos. But the, even these small little pieces of gold, they, every time they hit a, a, a spot of water, they go around it and then they just bounce right back up to the top, whereas the pyrite does not. And you're seeing the gold come down pretty much clean right into the number one. A little bit of pyrite still. But now the only pyrite is the big coarse stuff, which probably should have been classified out before we ran anyways. Correct. Here's what we ended up with for number one after we ran, I don't know, that's probably about three gallons worth. And we were playing with the table and playing with the water, and so we got a lot more than we had anticipated. But now we're just gonna take the number one here and rerun it on the table one more time and clean it up quite a bit more, and all of our gold will come across under the water bar. And here's the panned out, it concentrates off the shaker table. You have quite a bit of gold in there. And this has been through their cleanup table two or three times is the report I got. So having two to three gallons of stuff produce that much gold is pretty impressive. I wanted to give a quick big thank you both to Dan from Danner Prospecting and Harry from Mine Operator. I have so much fun doing these collaborations with these guys. It is so fun to get together with other YouTubers, other like-minded people, and do stuff that we all really enjoy. It is so much fun, and it's always fun when Dan and Harry are around. So thank you guys, and I really appreciate you coming down and running my equipment, running samples. It's always a great time.